Welcome to the Synthesis of Yoga, the book that changed my life. We have completed the introduction of the synthesis. Five chapters have been covered. Now we are moving on to the part one, the yoga of divine works. But before starting, I would like to take up some clarification on vocabulary. One of our uh, listeners of this podcast series, my friend Satish, who suggested that uh, it will be good if I clarify the terms Purusha and Prakriti. Because often the word Purusha is understood as man and in this today's society, there is a great deal of questioning and growing understanding of patriarchic society, matriarchic society, gender bias, and all those related issues. The word Purusha need a better understanding. So this episode is about clarifying this word Purusha and Prakriti. Purusha and Prakriti can be understood as like an English equivalent of being and becoming. Being is neither male nor female. It is gender neutral term. As you can see in uh, Sanskrit grammar, the way they say the first person, second person, third person. Like Uttama Purusha, Madhyama Purusha, Pradhama Purusha. Purusha is that person, being, which is beyond gender. Gender comes as a next layer. So the Purusha term, we will find it across the synthesis. We will find it across Indian knowledge traditions. And in Indian knowledge tradition, there are many different ways this term has been used, also subdivided into specific aspects of the Purusha. In Sankhya is where we see the Purusha and Prakriti, duality. Now, Sri Aurobindo also uses the term he and she. How does this come into picture? We know that in general nature, Prakriti means nature. In general, nature is associated with she. And the soul in nature, the being behind nature is associated with he. That's how the he and she come into usage in the vocabulary of Sri Aurobindo and Indic traditions. And the view on nature has many variants in Indic traditions. All the way from seeing nature as the divine Shakti who is manifesting the worlds both objective worlds as well as the subjective worlds. That's on one side. Other side, there are other variants of it looking at Shakti as Maya, the principle that creates the worlds. And word Maya is again misunderstood as illusion. Maya simply means the measure, the limiting aspect that binds things into a form. And in some traditions, yogic schools, also nature is looked upon as illusion and the purpose of yoga as to get out of this illusion. But in Sri Aurobindo's integral perspective, it starts with the view of nature. And Sri Aurobindo looks at nature as lower nature and higher nature. Higher nature is para, prakriti, and lower nature is referred to as the apara prakriti, the divine nature. And here 
the manifest nature which has this mechanical dimension. When we look at physical world, there is really a set of mechanical operations of nature. But as we get more subjective dimensions of nature, our psychological dimensions of nature, it is less and less mechanical. And within all that, there is the being behind. And our individual being is just a dot in the larger cosmic being. And we are not aware of that larger being. And as I mentioned before, being in its original nature is neither male nor female and it is formless. Now, that's also referred to as the Sat of Sat Chitananda. That's another important word in Indic tradition. Sat Chit Ananda. The fundamental nature of reality is seen as Sat Chitananda, the blissfully conscious existence. And Sat Chitananda is composed of three words Sat, Chit, and Ananda, of which the Sat is again the pure being. Now, how does the being become the world? That was the quest of the yogins to discover. And that's where we see the narrative of the Sat being moving towards its manifestation through Chit. Chit is having two, Chit has two dimensions to it, two aspects of it. Pure consciousness has its pure awareness part of it and the power of this awareness, power of consciousness to create out of itself. Self-creating out of itself the real ideas and out of that the worlds. So that creative power is the Shakti. And the pure awareness part is also referred to as Shiva or He. And here is where we see the play of the duality, He and She. And in our subjective individual existence and life, we can observe exactly the same play. Within us, there is the witness consciousness, pure awareness that is growing within us, pure being within us. And out of that, we can have creative ideas and there's a creative force that manifests everything. Our life is a creative flow of that force. And that force, the creative force in its original source is the divine Shakti and in its manifest bound forms, it is the apara prakriti or the mechanical aspects of the nature with all the transient forms. So there is on the higher dimension, on the divine dimension, there is the pure chit shakti and their union, their creative union is what builds the worlds and in that is the ananda of becoming. So that completes the term, Sat, Chit, Ananda. Chit has the two dimensions, pure awareness of consciousness and the creative force of consciousness. Together, it manifests the worlds and Ananda is the very cause of that creative dance between these two principles, often referred to as the he and she. And every individual, regardless of your body type and gender, has these two dimensions. Therefore, in Indian conception, you will see Ardhanari Shura. One half is male, other half is female. And every individual, regardless of your gender, has that. On one side is the pure awareness, pure being within, and there is a creative force of the being that manifests the worlds and your personal creative life on earth. So within you, both are there, and it is not tied to a particular gender. He and she, and these two dimensions, are playing within every individual and across the manifest world. So, so that 
he is also referred to as Purusha. And Prakriti is the manifest dimension and Shakti is the force that manifests, the creative energy, the creative force manifests the worlds. And Shakti and Prakriti are the two poises of the same nature. The divine poise and here the manifest poise where everything is limited and bound into specific forms and specific functional roles in the play of multiplicity. In that, when we are waking up in the process of yoga, we become self-aware and that is the soul in nature waking up. That is also referred to as a purusha. And then there is purusha's attempt to realize, understand who the prakriti is and behind the prakriti, the divine shakti who is manifesting the worlds and also awakening the purusha to reveal the divinity in nature. So that's the generic underlying framework and the way the words are used in Sri Aurobindo's writings and synthesis of yoga, the reference to Purusha, reference to he and she, you will continuously encounter. And uh, this is more cosmic terms and it is not our ideas about gender. This is the notions of how consciousness manifests the worlds. And uh, this Indic wisdom, look at consciousness as the underlying reality out of which everything is manifesting. So here is the creative power of consciousness as Shakti that manifests the worlds and the being and the pure consciousness, the pure awareness that is presiding over it as the Purusha. And they are inseparable. These are two sides of one being. So there is recognition of the formless one, oneness. But that oneness, when it moves towards manifestation, become the two in display, he and she, pure awareness and the creative force of this awareness creative force of this consciousness, awareness of the consciousness, or rather we can say consciousness has these two dimensions, pure awareness and the force of awareness to create out of itself. So that's the way Sri Aurobindo using this term. And also I want you to remember it is also related to the Satchidananda, Sat, Chit, Ananda. Chit is where Chit and Shakti come together. And nature has this higher nature and lower nature. And also outer objective material nature and inner subjective nature. And it is in the inner subjective nature we have the witness soul within us, the observer within us. The observer and the observed. The observer is the Purusha, the observed is the Prakriti, nature. And when ancient scriptures, Upanishads say, Aham Brahmosmi or Shweta Ketu, uh, you are that. In which we say, Aham Brahmosmi also, the, the notion that I am the creator, in which there is pure consciousness within you, pure witness within you, pure being within you, who is manifesting your own reality, your own worlds. And understanding this requires a deep dive within ourselves to see how we manifest our own personal reality. And as we go into the larger cosmic dimension, we realize how the cosmic being creates the worlds. So within us, we will find both he and she. And in Tantra, we see the Ardhana Rishura concept. It is there within all of us, regardless of gender. And in Savitri, Sri Aurobindo refers to as the he and she. This, are, this is the might and right in things. The knot that ties together the stars. It is the creative couple, complementary. In today's world, there is a great deal of gender war that is happening, the conflict that is happening. The male ego and female ego trying to dominate each other and control each other. When we transcend the ego, what we find is the 
complementary forces of one being creating the manifest world where there is the pure awareness and the power of awareness to manifest within each individual and realizing this and uniting this is what brings our true individualization and flowering of our true being our soul's true becoming unfolds in time and space and that's the journey of yoga to unite these two and by nature men have a tendency to move towards the formless pure awareness that's a generic habit when men turn towards spirituality when a woman turns towards spirituality there is a tendency to move towards the creative force the divine shakti who creates the worlds and dynamic she is more dynamic so symbolically in the tradition everything is looked up as upon as symbol so man and woman are also looked upon as symbols so a woman is seen as shakti divine shakti and man is seen as that soul who is the witness the observer and they cannot be separated they are one two sides of one being and uh, the eternal seeking of man and woman for each other is because of the original spiritual dimension where they are actually one in the creative play there is a separation and there is a eternal quest and in love there is a union and manifestation of love is where the two come together and realize that we are one two sides of one being there is no separation between the two and this gender wars is a limited perspective coming from the limited ego with its deep sense of separation and the need to control the other because the ego is concerned about controlling the other whether it is acting through a man or a woman ego is ego and it is having this deep sense of separation and the need to control things but in yoga we learn to transcend the ego and go beyond the genders and to realize within ourselves internally the union of both male and female principle the purusha and prakriti purusha and shakti ishvara and ishvari these are all the vocabulary coming from indic traditions so that union is what makes you whole and complete so that your soul can bloom so with that uh, i would like to this uh, i would like to end this short um, episode just clarifying the vocabulary so that you can enjoy the remaining chapters of the synthesis without getting confused about purusha and prakriti or he and she and the gender confusion that may come with it so let's put them all aside and enjoy this larger cosmic vision of shri arupinto thank you Thank you.